Yeah, welcome back everyone to the lecture two. So in this lecture, uh, we are going to see some more details of uh, uh, of the simple computer design. Okay. So in the previous lecture, I will just remind you. Okay. Uh, as I have said, in order for computer to support a particular operation, you need to have hardware for that particular operation. And then we have to discuss how this hardware was later on automated. So it was replaced by electronic switches. Uh, which was controlled by flip flops. So, that of this flip flop was called as a register, which is called as an instruction register. And whatever code you write in register, appropriate hardware will be enabled. So, if you write this code 100, then adder is enabled. Then, whatever numbers you supplied here will be added, and you'll be getting the result. Similarly, if you want subtraction, you write one, remaining all of them as zero. So, this is one thing which we have seen earlier in the previous video. But the problem with this particular approach is here. We are selecting, in the, we have assumed that in the memory the codes are written and control unit is simply reading the codes and writing into instruction register. So with that, with that you will be able to select one of the operation, one of the hardware, you will be able to enable one of the hardware but the problem is you will not be able to change the operands. We did not discuss about the operands in the previous video. It was assumed that the operands are automatically changed but even uh, if you want the complete thing to be automated then uh, even uh, you need to take about, take care of the operands as well. So in this video we are going to see how uh, a computer which can not only select a particular operation but also select a particular operands can be designed. So in order to do that, so first uh, what actually happens is what actually the computer can do. So yesterday what we have seen, that means in the previous video what we have seen was a too simplistic view of uh, microprocessor. So when you talk about a real microprocessor, so your real, uh, that means we want to make the microprocessor more perfect. So this microprocessor along with this hardware, so, so on, whatever the hardware you want, you can include. So there should be some path for the data. So this thing we have seen, so two operands needs to be supplied. So there are two buses, one bus for operand one and other ones for operand two, okay. And there is ultimately this ALU is going to give you result and the result is going to come on a third bus which you call it as result bus. So now if I want to completely automate the process, uh, one thing what I can do is I can have registers. I can supply the buses with the value contained in this register. Okay, let me take two temporary registers, temporary A and temporary B. Okay. So now whatever value I store in this register that will be available to my hardware. And this part, you know this part we have already discussed what operation is selected out of the hardware that depends on the instruction register. Okay, different flip flops of, inst flip -flops of instruction register are controlling different hardwares. Okay, this part uh, we have already seen. So if I want addition, I will be simply writing one there and remaining all of them zeros like this. Assume, let us assume the size of this uh, register is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So now if I want to completely automate my process, then in the memory, assume this is your memory, you, in the memory you need not, not only you, you should store the code for addition, but also the operands. Let us say if I want to add 3 plus 4, then I want to subtract, subtract 7 and 6. Okay, so then I need to write uh, the code, addition code, one for addition, then operands three. So three, if I, let us assume these registers are 8 bit, so I need to write 8 bit value. So three is represented as zeros, zero, zero, one, one, and then four is represented as zeros, zero, one, zero, zero. This is my first instruction, which says add three comma four. And then the next instruction, which is subtract 7, 6 needs to be stored in the memory like I want subtraction, so therefore this bit should be 1, remaining all the zeros, then the number 7, 7 coded in binary, so it will be 1, 1, 1, and then 6 coded in binary, 0, 1, 1, 0, right. So now, uh, there is something which is going to differ now. Now, the design of your control unit is going to change. Now you should design your control unit such that it reads this instruction 
and after reading this instruction it separates what should go here and what should go here and what should go that means it should separate this 1000 okay this one followed by four zeros and give it to the instruction register and then it should be able to separate the other operand which is your 00, zero. 0011 and it should be able to give this to your A register. Similarly, the problem with this particular uh, architecture is the size of the instruction. If you see, you require 5 uh, what you call uh, uh, right uh, bits for the upcode and you require 8 bits for one operand, 8 bits for another operand. And one more thing is, these operands, whatever you are supplying, they are fixed. A programmer needs to supply this operand at the time of programming. So if there is something, there is no chance for anything called as variable here. So there is nothing is variable, everything is fixed and everything needs to be supplied by the, uh, what you call uh, the programmer. So if you want to give more flexibility to the programmer and if you want to reduce the instruction size, let us first talk about the instruction size here. So if you see the size of the instruction, 5 plus 8 plus 8, so it keeps you around 16 plus 5, so 21 is the size of the instruction okay so and storing this 21 bit instruction in the memory will be very difficult and uh, your instruction size increases so if you want to reduce the instruction size and uh, you need to have uh, that means you need to still do operations then you need to you go for different architectures so here is the point where architectures come into existence okay so here if i don't want to use it if i want to use a lesser width instructions so then I need a computer which has a few set of registers okay and again it needs an ALU no computer can be a computer without an ALU so therefore ALU is compulsory you need to use it so again you know what ALU contains it contains adder, subtractor, dedicated hardware for doing all those things division and all those things and again you also know that in order to select a particular operation you need to write the code into what is called as uh, instruction register so you have instruction registers also present and uh, this ALU this hardware is connected through buses two buses for input and one bus for the output okay now you sh if you uh, what we have to do is we have to uh, I'm not using the registers that means I'm not using the earlier uh, I don't want to use this situation where uh, every time a user needs to supply a number so because we, with that what is happening the size of the instruction is uh, increasing so if you want to reduce the instruction size then you can go with for this particular architecture so in this architecture let us assume there are some four to five registers okay so and all those registers are connected to a mux this is mux and here also you have a mux so the same registers are connected like this okay so every mux has select line so we will call it as select line for bus A this is select line for bus B and then you are going to get the result if you want to store the result see one more problem with the earlier uh, approach is we are not storing the result anywhere so if you want to store the result so here as we have included some registers the result can also be stored in one of the registers so let us assume the result is reaching all the registers but only the register which is enabled okay so so that will be able to you need to have a decoder so each and every line of this decoder is connected to one of the, one register this is connected here this is connected here this so on and so forth so now uh, what you can do is there are four things now which you have to mention so one is operation what operation is going to happen that depends on what you write here and what data is going to come in uh, as operand 1 that depends on what you have given to select A so if you give select A as 0 0 it's actually there are let us assume there are more than 4 registers so I need there will be definitely 3 select lines so if I give 0 0 0 then register 1 will be selected the 0 3 ok let us assume this is R0 so this value will be loaded onto the bus if I write 0 0 1 the next register value will be loaded 0 1 0 next register value same is the case with this particular marks okay so again as this there are more than four register i need three select lines okay so three select three uh, three bits for selecting this three bits for selecting this five bits for selecting your operation and then after uh, you're done with again you have to select one register for storing the result again you require three bits for storing this so, so now 
your instruction if you see imagine if you can uh, just imagine what your instruction is going to look in the memory so your instruction should now contain opcode opcode which is nothing but what should happen and then it should contain the value of select t that means what what is your first operand and then your second operand and then your destination this can be in any order it depends on you you are the designer and you can keep it in whatever order you want okay so now example if i if i am building an instruction a computer with this now the instruction code looks like for addition so the code looks like this followed by let us say if i want to add r0 and r1 and store the result in r7 so then i will be writing r0 to select r0 i need to write 000 let us say there is no r7 so let me write r3 so therefore in order to select r1 i need to write a code as 001 and to for destination it is 3 so 0011 so now what the operation it happens uh, what is expected is r0 will be added to r1 and result will stored in r3 so this is the operation i am expecting for them the code is this thing so now you need to design a control unit the control unit design again is going to differ so it should read the instruction from the memory separate this part of code part and give it to instruction register and separate the next part 000 give it to select a separate the next part 001 give it to select b and separate the next part 011 and give it to the destination so with this you have uh, built a, a computer which is uh, which is uh, which can work on variables because you don't know what is the what the registers are storing so you can have any value stored onto the register and that uh, your uh, what do you call your processor will be able to work on those particular values whereas in earlier case if you see here uh, so even though uh, here you were able to supply the operands, the operands were fixed, so you cannot change the operand at runtime. So whereas here, as the operands are stored in the register, they can be changed at runtime. This is one such example of a register, you can have one such uh, example uh, of, a diff of an architecture. This architecture is called as general register architecture, where the data to an end, you can come from any one of the registers. So as data is coming from any one of the registers, so therefore this architecture is called a general register based ar architecture like this you have accumulator based architecture stack based architecture different architectures are there and every architecture has its own advantage and disadvantage okay for example the advantage of this particular architecture is the size of the instruction you can see it's very very small and the data can come from uh, any register and result can be stored in any, any register so that is one advantage which you have in this particular operation the major advantage is the size of the instruction okay so now if you talk about uh, the accumulator based architecture so this is the architecture which was ultimately which was developed to reduce the size of the instruction and uh, this architecture is called as general register based architecture similarly if you want uh, another type of architecture you can go for an accumulator based architecture accumulator based so what happens under this architecture everything is almost the same so this concept is never going to change ALU contains hardware okay and it is driven by an instruction register so this concept is present it is universal it is present for whatever architecture you have this concept is same okay the only thing what is going to change is uh, the bus uh, again so each each module should get an input from the bus okay how the data arrives to the hardware okay that is going to be different in different architecture so in accumulator based architecture what you are going to do is you are going to base an accumulator a register called as accumulator okay and this the other bus that is actually connected to your memory your data memory or any registers your any register or data memory okay and the result whatever is coming here that is always goes into accumulator there is no other way it cannot go anywhere except accumulator okay data can come out of accumulator one of the operand comes from accumulator results get stored in accumulator you have the freedom only of the other operand you can change where the other operand is coming from 
So in this type of uh, what you call uh, compute architecture, this is accumulator based architecture. Why it is accumulator based? Because it get, results are getting accumulated in a single register, so therefore it is called as accumulator based architecture. So when you see the instruction of this particular uh, uh, what you call uh, computer, again for selecting addition, let us talk about addition, we need to write the same code. So for addition, the code is going to be same. Okay, but next I need to write, uh, I need to mention about this what is going to come okay if it is a memory you know memory is going to have an address every address uh, every location has an address so you need to provide an address from where your data comes in or you can provide an immediate data or you can provide a register value let us assume let us try with an immediate data so i can have 1000 followed by data let us say the data is uh, uh, i want to add accumulator plus some 40 and store the result in accumulator. This part is fixed, you cannot change it. Always the result gets stored in accumulator and one of the operand gets comes from accumulator because the architecture sub says that one should be accumulator and result should be in accumulator. So this part is not changed. This part cannot change, so therefore you need not mention about accumulator or anything like that. So you need to just mention what operation you want and you need to just mention what is the other operand. So it is 40, so it will be taken as uh, 40, uh, 0, 1, 0, 0. 0, 0, 0, 0. Again, if you compare this instruction with our earlier instruction, okay, this instruction, you can see here the size of the instruction was 21 bits, okay, for addition. Whereas here, if you see the size of instruction, if you have 5 bits here and 8 bits, 5 plus 8, uh, it's around 13 bits. So very less size instruction, okay, the instruction size is less, but the advantage is, uh, the, uh, the, uh, how are you able to reduce this instruction sizes based on this particular architecture? And if you compare this uh, with our uh, earlier architecture, you see this one. So here the size of instruction is 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3. 3 plus 3 is 6, 6 plus 3 is 9, 9 plus 14. 14 bit instruction. If you can further reduce this instruction size, provided let us say if I don't want to eat register, if I want to just go for 4 registers, and then uh, for 4 register, this, the, uh, this, this select, this select, this select being used to 2 2 bits. So you have 2 plus 2 plus 2, which is 6, 6 plus 5, 11 bit instruction. So everything is in my hand now. So I can, uh, based on what instruction size I want and based on there are other advantages of accumulator and other general register architecture, I can choose appropriate architecture. So this is, uh, this was about architecture. So we'll discuss, uh, okay, the design of control unit here. So the job of your control unit here is to fetch the instruction, separate the upcode part, which is, 0, 0 supplied to this register and then give the second operand uh, separate the second operand and supply it. and we also know that there are uh, there is something called as addressing mode so here you can instead of applying immediate data you can store you can have the data stored in the memory and second part instead of immediate data can be a address it can be an address 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 so based on how much data memory it can support Based on that, you have that much size of, uh, what you call that much, uh, bits are required for the, uh, what you call operand, right. So again, the size of the instruction increases if the range increases. So there's always a trade-off you have to do between your instruction, size of your instruction and uh, what you call, uh, and the size of the instruction and uh, what you call uh, the range of the memory, right. So that's it for today. Uh, we will see the remaining thing in the next class.